In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let me begin our online service by wishing you a very happy and blessed Easter. I hope from wherever you are today, whether you're watching this from home, on the move, or maybe in one of our care homes nearby, thank you for joining me and I hope you are able to have a very happy Easter indeed. Certainly, my love and blessings to you and your loved ones on this very special day. We've been so lucky to have this wonderful spring-like weather that I thought it necessary to bring our service outside today. So we gather on this Easter Sunday. We begin by joining together in the words of confession. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We haven't been able to use the words of the Gloria in Excelsis, our song of praise, for seven weeks, and so I'm pleased to be able to lead it for us again on this Easter day. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art the Most High in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect our prayer for th this Sunday. Let us pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. The first of our readings set for today from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. 
Then they put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading is from John chapter 20, beginning at the first verse. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary, stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. She saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me begin uh, my address by once again saying Happy Easter to you and your loved ones. The sun is shining, it's feeling warmer, hear all this birdsong around me, spring is bursting into life 
with blossom and new buds on our trees. Borders that have lain bare and empty for months, now full of new growth and colour. As an April baby, it may come as no surprise, but I love this time of year. Yes, for hay fever sufferers like myself, it can still be a challenge. But overall, we soak up that new life that we see and the joy it brings to us all. Perfect for Easter Sunday. I find at Easter, I spend time looking back to Easter weekends of old. Times with family, times in different houses and settings too. Memories made that last a lifetime. We know though that life isn't all spent in spring. It has moments of change, turmoil, sadness and loss as well. I recently heard someone say that life is like a dance where the conductor controls the tempo and the pace. We though are unfortunately not the ones in control. That being the case, I guess at the moment most days can be like a gentle waltz, a one, two, three. Things are happening in expected ways that we can manage. Then though, life can become like a tango, full of drama, quick turns and unexpected surprises. There are those joyful moments too. Well, maybe they're like some sort of samba or salsa, times when there is so much joy and celebration. Finally, I find there are times much like a a good old Charleston, where there's plenty of fun to be had, but I'm still turned upside down, spun around, or knocked sideways. I wonder what dances your life has brought you over the years, and will do as we look to what is to come. Of course, learning all about these various dances used to be through watching something like Come Dancing, with competitions from ballrooms all around the country. Nowadays it is through the ever so shiny glitter ball that is strictly Come Dancing. I'm sure it's a show we are almost all familiar with. Thankfully, I hope you're pleased to hear there are no judges on hand to score us as we make our way through the dance of life. It is a show that many of you will know that I love. But there is just one issue. One moment so dull they have even resorted to getting celebrities to read them out. Yes, the all-important T's and C's, terms and conditions. From telling us how much a call will cost to asking the bill payers permission, they appear in every main show. And they appear in so much of life too. Everything seems to have terms and conditions attached. I wonder, do you ever read them? I know some who diligently work through page after page of them but most often tick the necessary box and move on, assuming that there isn't going to be anything to catch us out. I mean, surely they wouldn't want to do that. Of course, that is exactly what they're trying to do. In those T's and C's, terms and conditions are the extra admin charge they forgot to mention the various bits of your insurance that aren't covered. Life today seems so full of conditions, barriers, boundaries that are not life-giving but life-draining. They seem to stem from a desire to catch you out, not to a help or assist. 
frustratingly, but truthfully, we use them ourselves too, adding various conditions or terms to what we do. Maybe you've heard someone say, well, I can attend, but only if I can get away, as I have a really important appointment. Of course, sometimes that appointment rightly needs to be prioritised, but not always. The reality is we aren't fully prepared to give ourselves over to something or someone. So often we hear, well, I could come over, but, and the one I hear most, well, I would come to church, but I'm not religious, or a variation, I'm not religious, but I do believe in something. In all cases, no one really responds. We just take it and accept it, even if reluctantly. On the cross, Jesus gave no terms and conditions. There were no barriers other than the ones placed by others. With those outstretched arms on the cross, he took on all our sins, the sins of all humanity, and he did so out of an unconditional love for us. He brought us into direct relationship with God, each and every one of us, you and me. Now we can add in our excuses, we can find terms and conditions, but his model is not of this world and remains free of any limits. That is the power of the cross and the true message of our risen Christ. In taking all that on, consuming the darkness, the hate of this world, he then bursts forth from the tomb, shattering expectations, breaking down barriers, bringing new life, new joy and new found freedom. Any limits on that have been humanity since. So people will say, what does Easter Sunday really mean? And what does it mean to me? I want them to see that unconditional love, to truly see and experience a different way of seeing our world. One that invites opportunity and one that is full of hope. We are an Easter people because that is our message to live out and share with the world those outstretched arms on the cross, those same arms reach out to you and me today, saying turn away from conditions, barriers, expectations. Push aside any limits or terms we may want to place on God's love and simply take his hand. Our true partner in the dance that is life. His promises fulfilled on that first Easter mean that he is there to take our hand, your hand and journey with you, knowing that the dance will change, that it will bring joys and challenge, but it is a dance you face together, a guide through it all. Be in no doubt too that this is not some far off, distant or hopeful being that sits on high, this is the same God who seeks to take your hand. The same God that brought life. The same God that split the Red Sea. The same God that through his son knew the pain and anguish of being human, as well as the joys and celebrations. The same God who witnessed hate, violence and war is the one who sees it in our world today. While so often we cannot see his hand at work, he is there, leading us, protecting us. Nothing we are told 
can ever pluck us from those hands. On this Easter Sunday then, please know the joy of the risen Christ in your hearts and your lives. Please take that challenge to stop with the T's and C's, terms and conditions, but to experience life in all its fullness. Please continue to keep the faith, to keep loving unconditionally. And of course, how else could I end than with that heartfelt call to keep dancing? Happy Easter. Amen. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Let us pray. We pray to Jesus, who is present with us to eternity. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to all the nations. We pray particularly for war-torn places today, for Ukraine and its people, for Afghanistan and other places often forgotten. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry, shelter to all those who need it. Be with the vulnerable, and on this Easter, nourish us with your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life, be with us and all who follow you in the way, in the dance that is life. We pray for your church, for the churches of our benefice at Panfield, St Mary's Bocking, and online, asking that you deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, good shepherd, who gave your life for the sheep, recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick, and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. We hold before you now all for whom we are worried and concerned at this time, asking that you hear our prayers and their names. From our benefice here, we continue to pray for Jean and John Goodwin, Patricia Norwood, Sue, Jackie, Francis, Peter, Jennifer, Joe and Bernard, and Margaret Everett. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. At this Easter time, we call to mind our dear departed loved ones, those whom we cherish in our hearts but see no more. As we call them to mind, we remember too those from our Year's Mind this week, Ruth Darby, Elsie Sams, William Hedger, Victor Jenner, Elizabeth Ware, Jack Jobson, Eileen Pudney, Edwin Stone and Thomas Worthington. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we close our prayers by joining together in the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. In a moment, I'll close our special Easter Day service with a blessing. Thank you for joining me. Please do share this service with family and friends. Next week, I'm pleased to say I'll be recording our service from Panfield Church. The refurbishment works are now completed and it'll also be a communion service as many of you are used to. And I hope you'll join me for that. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.